Now it's time to build the transmission. This is always the fun part, so stay tuned. I'm going to build up the selector shaft, shaft 1 and shaft 2. Well, A, shaft A, shaft B. And then we put all the other parts um, when they're all together. That's how that should look. Oh, uh, E-clip, washer, spring, select dog, um, E-clip, E-clip, select dog, spacer, blah, blah, blah. So it's as simple as that. Let's move that to one side. Now we move on to gear shaft A. And that's only these parts here. So what we want to be looking at is the longer gap, the longer smooth part here on the right and the shorter part just there. And we're going to keep that shaft that way. So in order, that and that, with that and that, and then we've got these two in the middle and then we've got these at the end right All with me so far so we're going to be putting them on from this end and working his way down here to put them on there basically those are for there that's for there that's for there so without further ado, so E-clip gear metal part, metal gear with an E-clip either side and an E-clip just here with the brass part, plastic gear held on by an E-clip. That's shaft A. So straight on to shaft B. This is the one with all these parts on. So that is the shaft, the flat spot is here and this is going to be the rear of the gearbox because that is where the drive cup fits on for the, for the main drive shaft. So we're going to get one E-clip and one bearing. Then we get the small wheel with another bearing at the side of that. Then we have this um, part, which is J6, and then an E-clip, and then we have two E-clips with one of those in the middle, and then we have this big gear with a bearing at each side. And then we have the J7, which is that one. And that has a bushing either side because this one doesn't rotate on the shaft. It slides backwards and forwards. So we don't want a hard steel bearing. Um, so we're just going to put these in for now. And then carrying on from there, we have the big washer. And a clip in front of that. That part. Then that part. Then that part. With a big bearing either side. A 1260 I think they are. And at the end we have a spacer and an last e-clip so that is the order that they go in on and that is the way they go on and for all of you that think i'm being bloody clever i'm really not because i'm watching my video on the last one i did right and i'm using that as a guide because it's making the job a hell of a lot quicker.
So yeah, that's uh, that's all good. That is shift rod B. So that's that. Right, let's uh, have a bit of a reset. Let's build the motor end of the um, transmission. The side with the uh, brass insert, we'll leave that, um, leave that out because we need to get the the shift shaft in, shift shaft. Um, right, before I get any further, on this end, we usually have this. Um, Shift off that runs through there, and then this, that, um, runs on top of there, like so, with the ball on top, and I've got this. So I'm going to be having a play with this to see what it's like basically it's a servo mount that fits on there and you have a micro servo that sits on there that um, operates the um, the shift shaft um, so That means a strip down of the transmission if I don't put this on. So I'm going to put this on. I do get some extra long uh, thingies. So let me put that on there. And there it is. It's on there. Here's the servo. What servo do we get? We get a micro servo from Tower Pro. So this can be used as a shift servo. And which way around would we fit that? It doesn't say. I think it goes that way. Have these uh, 1.5 cap head screws. I wonder if I've got um, Spectrum Servo. Let me just have a look. I'm sure I've got a couple of uh, Spectrum Servos. Servos. Um, oh, I have, I have, which is a far better servo than uh, that one modified to fit in something and it's got no brackets, that's probably why it's in my box. Mm. Got another one there. Let's get that off. And away it goes. Can't remember what I use these for. Might need to put a washer on them. Mm. 
And they're metal geared anyway, so they're a little bit better than the Tower Pro. I might need to put a washer on them. But yeah, that looks um, pretty good. Looks a bit gnarly. More of these juffing plastic bags. Juffing hell. Does that fit on there? Yes, it does. So that will then fit on there. Right, I'm faffing. I've got that on there. Let's get um, the transmission together. Instead of prying about. Okay. We have put it in the right way around. That's that way. That one and the shift shaft. Fits in. I think I'm going to put these two in together. I will put lube on these before the final assembly so they fit in there let's put them all in together that's that that's that and that's all in cool and uh the bearings in I haven't put the spring on it I haven't put the spring on put the spring on there or it won't centralize and put the spring on Um, there. And then, oh, we'll oh, go. There we go. Come on. It's in there. Oh, I got that the right. I have got that the right way around. That goes through there, through there. And that. Through there. Dear oh dear. Dear oh dear. Put it in the right hole. As the actress said to the bishop. Come on, folks, get in them. There you go. Bit of a faff, but it's there. It's there. And the last little um, grub screw.
and this will have a piece of heat shrink over it again now I'm not sure if I'm using the right grub screw here yeah it looks like it fits That looked like it fits like a glove. That needs to go on that way. Let's start it first. Sorry about that, I had to have a little break because I'm tired and I was making dumb mistakes and I don't want to make dumb mistakes while I'm putting the gearbox together. So I've put this on, I used a Carson Poison truck puller 80 turn, I absolutely love these motors, they can be very smooth. As you can see the motor isn't meshed just yet i'm just going to make sure that um when i rotate that that grub screw doesn't hit the, that gear now also if you if if you mesh a gear too tight it's noisy and it can wear quicker than normal and if it's too loose again it can be noisy and it wears prematurely and what i've always done forever is put a slip of paper in and slowly crease that down no great weight on it and then just nip that up gently And then that should rotate out like that. So when you get a bit of mesh, I'll try and show you, there's an extremely small amount of play in that mesh between the pinion gear and the first spur gear in the transmission. And that, as always, held me in good stead and uh, never had a gearbox wear out so that's where I am right now I've put this drive cup on the back the gearbox is ready for a load of lubrication and then run it up but I'm going to try and find the listing of where I got this bracket from because there are diagrams as to how it's fitted and uh, I bought it such a long time ago I forgot all about it I need either a strong coffee or bed what time is it now? 10 o'clock I've been awake um, 24, hmm, not counting, I'm going to wait 34 hours, that goes on there like that, and let me just take that back off there, so I don't need it on at the moment, but what I'll do is I will carry on with this tomorrow because I need sleep. Oh, 
what are you doing? 60 hours this week. Yeah, that's uh, that's pretty good. I'll get a battery and run it up tomorrow. So I'm going to bed. Bye. And quite literally, 13 hours sleep later, I've come back to it. I saw that I'd made a, another mistake where this shift rod, this shift fork hadn't sat into the uh, groove right. So anyway, I thought I'd recorded myself fixing it, but I didn't. forgot to press play. So this is the shift servo. Um, you can just buy the bracket for around £10 off eBay. Just search for Tamiya Gear Shift Servo and it will come up. I think if you wanted to buy the servo with it, I think they're about £25. So 10 quid for a micro servo. The small rod was to join two ball cups. So yeah, I've used a Spectrum Surface... Um, servo i've put some grease on it plugged it into my test board just to run it up to see what it's like when this rod is in the middle it settles into second gear i've put it on a three-way switch um so that is working brilliantly and first gear is, that's third gear, first gear is there. Second gear, third gear. Starting to spit a bit of uh, grease up there. But that's quite um, quiet. So, yeah, that is the gear servo. If you change gear whilst it is stationary, if you're lucky, it will. do that but if, if it's slightly off it might not fully engage until you move it it's a constant mesh gearbox so it is always better to move it whilst you are moving There's a lot of flex in that servo bracket serious mistakes with it but I just made mistakes with it Right, let's get the actual casing on instead of playing about. Okay, dokey. Right. Well, I must say, working 60 hours a week and then not having any sleep is definitely not advisable. So, just moving this grease around, making sure it's 
on all the moving parts. You can put as much as you want in here, it's not really critical, but you need to have some, of course. Some people say that it's better to change the plastic gears to metal gears. It is not, because I speak I speak from experience. I put these in a uh, build a long time ago and they're all metal parts and they are as noisy as heck. They are noisy as anything. There are parts missing out of that because I have um, scavenged it but just left the metal gears in. So no, metal gears are not better. Even the brass helical gears. Um, I got rid of, I got some of those thinking that the helical cut gears would be better and they turned out to be just as noisy no matter how much grease that is put in. So yeah just keep the stock gears. Um, in my uh, smoking the bandit truck I fitted those gears in probably well, it'll be 30 years, June 1993, I fitted those, that's when the King Hauler was released. The first Tamiya truck, and those gears are still rolling, as quiet as anything. that I'll just put a bit of uh, grease in there a little bit of heat shrink uh, tubing over there I always go a little bit beyond so it shrinks down behind there so it, it stops this from sliding off Secret to this is fit the prop shaft in there and then we tilt the gearbox in between the rails. Make sure the prop shaft goes into the drive cup. which it is that sits snugly in there come on and yeah, That was my phone, not yours, so don't check your phone, or check your phone anyway. And that was me again, I'll put that on silent. Because it's Sunday, and we have Sunday silence here. And that noise was the play bus going up to the school, which is our home today. 
Oh my god, I'm going to put that phone on silent. Oh, that's Bluetooth, idiot. So that's the gear servo in. That's the lift servo, that's the steer servo. I'm going to take that out because I don't need it. And to take that out, I'm going to have to take the front suspension off. Could just leave it in. I could leave it in. To turn the axle around, I need a Carson steering rod to be able to use this as the steer servo. But I'm going to have to have a look at that to see if um, the steering linkage at the top would also move. If I turn the hubs around, I'll have a look at that later. So right, that's the gearbox in. I'm going to get the test board back out and see what it's like running up. And there it is, set up on the test bed for a bench test. So, I'm using my dates. Um, eight gears, lift axle up here, uh, throttle obviously, and steering. There's only four channels being used at the moment, so um, let's have a look at what that is all about. Very smooth. Steering. That's pretty good. And lift axle up here. And all the way. automatically stops in the raised position and this is the piece that we're watching just here this goes across down and across and obviously the axle goes down so I have lubricated it up And then you have to stop it because there's no limit switch at the other end, which is a shame. Now, I think it could do with a spring or something just to pull this um, mechanism back onto the thread because it, the, the, so it doesn't overreach. It actually gets to the end of the thread. 
like that so it, it, it doesn't overheat it so if you lift it up it just tries to catch on to the end of the thread on its own But yeah, overall, pretty uh, pretty happy with everything now. I think I'll leave it in its down position. So, we have power. <laughs> Fantastic. Right, sorry about the bit of a cock up at the start of the... Uh, gearbox build i was tired making excuses i had to go to bed so yeah brilliant so um what do you think let me know <laughs>